Hey, what's going on? Alex Goldbrick here again with another tutorial. This time we're going to be diving a little bit into the amp uh, module. So let's uh, let's get started. Uh, so right over here we've got our uh, our AxeFX uh, three um, software. Over here I got some notes. I figured uh, last time I learned a little bit not to put my uh, my face window open here so you can actually see the RTA now. So. All right, let's get uh, let's get going. I'll I'll get uh, this thing started up. You know, just so you can see this brand new and fresh. Start off by throwing an amp in here and a cab because I think I'd rather just have a cab. We won't dive into the cab. We're just gonna take one that I know for sure is gonna match the amp according to actually this manual. If you can see this, it's the Yex manual. I highly recommend looking at this if you're into, uh, you know, getting the actual um, information about the amp and on modeling within the amp module. So for today, we're going to be using the F5 or 5F1 Tweed, and I know for sure that that goes good with any six or eight inch uh, speaker, this kind of type. But we're going to use something similar because they don't have that actual one on here. We're going to be just using a one by eight amplifier, and today we're using the 5F1 Tweed. So let's go. So first of all. Authentic, you know, authentic basically means what does this amp have when you're actually using the amp? And for this amp specifically, there's uh, almost nothing. These, uh, these amps are very known for not having pretty much any sort of controls on them. And so it has just a drive and an input trim, and the trim isn't even on there, so it's just a drive. And uh, so, let's see, for um, just demonstration wise, this is what it's gonna sound like. What it sounds like you increase the drive you increase the volume and the drive you can hear that drop it down volume goes down drive goes down leave it at five for now all right so into the ideal tab ideal tab is basically everything that you might want in an amp this means it has controls that the original amp does not have likely or may not have so including all the bass and middle and treble all those controls high treble presence depth and master volume they didn't have a master volume in the uh in the normal amp that's why this master volume is set to 10 and that's how you can assume things for every single amp in this software is that if there is no master volume here in the authentic it's automatically pegged out to 10 assuming so if you want to change that 10 is where it would be if it was standard from the amp. That's how it's going to perform. So let's get into the input trim. So the trim is basically increasing gain without increasing the distortion. So you increase the trim, you're just going to get more and more volume out of it. So it's just going to keep on going that way. Input boost, exactly what you'd think it is. It's a boost to your input. is going to just reduce the amount of low frequencies. You can hear on. To me that sounds pretty good, so I'll leave the cut on for now. Fat, you're going to fatten up the bottom end, so let's get try that out. Add some body in the mids. the bright switch. The brights are going to add some that bright tone to your uh, guitar. High frequencies. And so this uh, bright cap, this affects how much brights you're actually going to hear. Uh, PF, mean, or PF means picofarads. Uh, it's a capacitance unit. You don't got to worry about that too much. Just know that as you increase this thing, the more bright it's going to sound. And you're also going to get a lot more noise. So dropping back that down to 47 picofarads or so, cuts the amount of noise. If you want, you can put the cut back down on, reduces the noise a little bit. So 
So I think I'll I think I'll leave that at like 65. I think that sounds pretty good. So if I want, of course all of this mingles well with the bass mid and treble up here. So if I think I want a little bit more bass, but I don't want to add the uh, you know the input boost or anything like that, I could do that. Maybe go up to like 7.15. Maybe scoop some of the mids because I got that cut on. Away some mids. Treble, maybe drop that down to four because I got the bright cap on. High treble, I'm not entirely sure. I think this is just adding additional treble to it, so let's just let's see what happens. Adds a little bit of that glassy texture to it. I kind of like that. Let's go to Pretty nice. Keep on going. Let's try the input boost now. Pretty nice. And of course, this is all on the, the low end pickup, so the one I usually use for my basses and kind of that sound. So, depth. The depth is gonna be, it's exactly what you kind of think it sounds like. Let's go all the way down. Right now, I don't hear much of a difference, so I'm just gonna leave that at zero. Maybe you can hear a difference, I'm not totally sure. You give that a whack as you like. Preamp, input boost is on, boost type. This is, uh, I really like this one, the T808. Of course, all of these sound very, very different. So you might want to tinker with these. The, sh the shimmer is like, if you ever heard of the shimmer uh, shimmer drive, kind of gives you that input boost of a shimmer drive. And all of these are modeled after actual pedals. So this is wicked heavy on the boost. So you can tinker with those as you like. There is a lot of different boosts to do. And a uh, quick tip, if you find something you like with this specific amp, right, you go to this library, you can type something in and you can save these settings. So, you know, just have a nice backup in case you find something you really want and you want to swap amps anyways, you can do that. So I'll go back to the T808 mod. I like that one. Uh, boost level, this is going to be basically boosting your saturation in the preamp or boosting your preamp gain, right? So if I go to four, not 24, that's... Hello large. It's just like you can hear it. Of course, remember, the more boost you have, the more noise you have. So I'm actually gonna leave that at 10. Keep the noise down a little bit. Saturation switch. You can use that if you'd like. It basically just engages a popular mod. Um, it's it's for thicker kind of tones. Especially for higher gain amplifiers. You can see the on ideal. It sounds pretty nice, but I'm gonna leave it off for now. Saturation drive, you can hear what this is. So basically, when you hit saturation in any curve, it's when um, the gain is basically as far as it will go up, and you're not gaining much more once you hit a curve of saturation. So you can, I'm not really sure how to like really describe it, other than if you went down a water slide, and then at the very bottom of the water slide, it kind of levels out, and maybe you'll go a decent distance on that leveled out area, but you're not gaining much descension, if that makes any sense. The saturation drive kind of, in, it's increasing that like level when you're not going to get any more descension or ascension. Usually the curve is upwards instead of downwards. So uh, that's what that is. Pre Preamp tube type. And these are basically what type of tubes you're using. You can buy these. So I used to have uh, orange amp and I used to use 12 AX7s. 
and uh, your little pop is actually simulating what the tube to swap would be like. So these, and it's funny because there's actually a little myth that goes on that these tubes actually change your tone. The tubes themselves don't change the tone, but tubes act somewhat of as a load with your speaker. So the cab um, makes all the difference. These tubes interact different with cabs. So keep that in mind when you're thinking you found some real good tubes, it's just interacting differently with the cabinet that you're using, so. So low end and high cut frequency, just like we would you think. Um, if you wanna cut these frequencies out, you can notch them out if you want to. 30 kilohertz is something you'll probably never hear unless you've got harmonics in your signal. Um, 10, hill or 10 hertz you'll probably never hear unless you've got some harmonics going in the negative direction. Preamp sag. So if you want that saggy kind of tone. I can't tell too much of a difference until you're at a really high gain signal. So I'm not going to use that for now. Woo! Bless me. So um, either way, tube hardness, that is going to be like, there's such thing as called a knee voltage and it kind of is, you know, it's another center point kind of thing where it's all about voltage and curves of voltage. These are very, very in-depth uh, characteristics for this amp uh, simulation, and chances are these types of things, you won't be tinkering with them unless you're really diving deep into the, into the nitty-gritty of trying to form your tone in the response of your amplifier. Most people are not going to get this far. The ideal is going to form your tone plenty. So, uh, but I'm just going to keep on going. Preamp bias and preamp bias excursion. These are b very, very in-depth characteristics as well. I wouldn't even tinker with those until you, unless you actually know what the heck they are. They're, they're things that you kind of, uh, in engineering school, they teach you a lot about these types of things. If you get into power amplifier design and to be honest, it's been a long time since I've messed with these kinds of figures. So chances are you won't even tell or even know what the difference is between any of these. All right, so let's just move on. Tone stack. So this is a kind of cool area in the amp. This is when you can ch change out the preamp of your current amp, like for instance, this F5F1 F1 Tweed. Um, you can change out the preamp from this to a different amp. So these are all different amps. You can change them out. If you want the Atomica, per se, preamp. <laughs> You can do that, right? So I prefer to keep the default, but you can do that. And then you can also use the location of it. So if you want to end pre -end, mid, you want to post, mid, end, you can change where it's going. And then also you can change the frequency of it. I would just leave this standard unless you really know what you're doing. Either way, it's not, it's not something most people tinker with. Same with the power amp. Honestly, most of the ones after you get through the ideal and maybe some of the preamp, you can mess with speaker a little bit, input, output, EQ. Those are pretty normal. But power supply and power tubes and power amp, these are all very, uh, these are very detail oriented type of settings that not many people know what really they do. So power amp modeling, you're definitely gonna want that on unless you don't want a power amp. So uh, negative feedback, Feedback is basically you're sending part of your signal back through um, and it's this is changing I'm assuming the uh, how much of that feedback is going back into your signal so you're just gonna end up getting more mix from what you previously had inside of it Let's see if I can get a little bit of that throw a chorus in here just because the more effects you have, like with delays and stuff like that, the more obvious these types of settings become. Let's get that back. You can hear it a little bit. It's a little bit more present, right? So if you throw that up to like 7-8. Actually sounds pretty good. I'm gonna leave that around six. Um, so presence, frequency, and depth accuracy. 
these are also two things that you're probably not going to tinker around with too much. Um, actually, almost everything on here I really wouldn't tinker too much with, unless it's this one. This one's kind of interesting. <laughs> fair most of the time when you see a cap a capacitor it's it does a lot to do with noise um, so honestly I didn't hear too much if I had a higher gain amplifier you might hear a little bit more so let's keep on going X form drive and X form matching these are transformer settings and usually that just means um, something to do more with voltage voltage changes voltage gain differences um, great thing about it, uh, transformers is that they don't uh, pass current transformation so either way these aren't things that you're going to mess around with too much you can try uh, just moving them up and down to see what they sound like You'd hear more if it was a high gain. Pi bias excursion. I'm not messing with any of these. Input speaker impedance. This actually has something to do with it. Definitely becomes more full, higher impedance. It's almost like another kind of a gain because the higher the impedance, the more voltage drop and the more voltage, like if your signal gets dropped across that thing, so that's a real setting. Uh, you could probably honestly get away with not touching that, but more touching the drive. All right, cathode and cathode time constants. I really wouldn't mess with those. Cathodes are part of a transistor, which is a power amp. It's, uh, you know, any amplifiers have transistors in them, cathode based amplifiers um, this is settings for those so if you if you want to dig into them go look up some uh, power amplifier uh, theory and you'll find some uh, amplifiers called like cathode followers and, and a whole bunch of other different types of designs and you might figure something out about these but I, I really wouldn't mess around with them too much um, power tubes and CF this is um, Oh, look at that, cathode follower, exactly. So um, you can change your tube types in here. Again, um, EL84, EL34s. These are very uh, common types of power tubes. Um, you, can, you can find them all over the place. Tube amp doctor, stuff like that. These are changing settings to do with the power tubes. So um, tinker around with those if you wish. Just know that you, you probably aren't going to hear too much of a difference unless you start really digging into uh, the response of your amplifier. Like, it's not going to be as much tone, but as much about how it feels to play it. And it's going to take you a minute to realize what these settings do from your actual, like, just strumming and how you're going to play it. Um, I'd honestly probably look up the uh, the manual for the um, the axe effects, just the uh, the module manager. You'll find out a lot more about that. But they'll probably not go too in-depth. So, forewarning. Um, bias tremolo. That's going to, once again, basically have a bias line. And um, it's going to be how, when you get a voltage, if it was a sine wave, how much of that voltage, like how is the voltage output going to be kind of moving along that bias line. It's super in-depth stuff. You're never going to probably use this stuff. Um, SAG, this actually is kind of interesting stuff. If you've ever had a, uh, if you have a pedal board or had a pedal board before you got this thing, um, some power supplies have a SAG or a, uh, an input SAG, which basically means it emulates a bad battery in a, in a um, in one of your pedals, kind of, or a power supply. Basically acts like the voltage is a little bit low. It gives you a saggy, more compressed kind of tone. So um, 
you can even change the power type, so DC to DC. So if um, you can see, if you go to DC, this is gonna stop fluctuating. And uh, B plus kind of, it's, um, I'm not, I can't even remember, I'm not gonna lie to you. But just know it's, it's basically a, uh, a parameter in some very uh, elaborate math formula that changes the response again of certain parameters. If you want, the, I'd say honestly the most important of all of these settings is probably your supply sag and your variac. So, you, change, you turn that variac all the way up, a little bit more compressed, you turn that all the way down. Honestly, I prefer to leave that just right around five, and uh, I'd probably leave the Variac right around like 120. I like a little bit of Variac. You can actually find pedals with a Variac setting, like in a, like the Bogner Ecstasy series, um, and things like that. You'll find Variac every so often. Uh, screen frequency and screen cue. I don't even remember what these are, and if I. Uh, I've tinkered around with a lot of these settings, but most people probably aren't gonna get this far in. Once again, go look at the module manager, or the module manual, and you'll find out more about this stuff. Speaker, this will uh, let you check out your impedance curve. And uh, for the Champlifier, that's what this is uh, helping you out with. You can, you know, cut out certain frequencies, boost some, reduce others. Whatever floats your boat, that's all right here. HF means high frequency, high frequency resolution. Um, so you can you can you can do a lot of things with these things. So as you can see, if you want to uh, reduce the uh, impedance of uh, the higher end frequencies, you can do that here. If you want to increase the impedance on higher end frequencies, you can do that as well. The slope obviously changes where the hump is. But if you know much about the frequency domain, the frequency response of certain, uh, certain, basically some, uh, some of these, God, I can't remember the word, cabinets and speakers, you can tinker with that more here. Once again, advanced setting, you don't need to be messing with this stuff. Input and output EQ, uh, these are all messing around with, these are different types of, uh, filters basically so high shelf low shelf peak peaking and tilt EQ you can just kind of adjust these as you will Q is a parameter the higher the Q the more accentuated this curve is going to be basically so whenever you see a Q it is basically a, one of your variables in an algebraic equation that the higher the Q it's attached to some other you know, usually like a flat number, but it multiplies, it makes the effect more dramatic. Um, and then you can change all of these different, you can change the responses in these, out, in these EQs as well. Generally mids are around two to 4K, highs are 8K, one or actually 500 to two, yeah. Lows, mids, highs, just like you'd expect dynamics, compression, and whatnot. So that is generally all of the settings you're probably going to tinker around with in the AMP module. To be fair, most of what you're going to do is going to be right here. The type of AMP, and they're all in alphabetical order. A couple of them that I really like are, uh, let's see, there's a there's some Bogner one in here too. I, like, I really like the Bogner ones. Um, I like this one right here, the F5, F1 Tweed. You can look up all of these in this YEX guide. I recommend looking at this because it tells everything about what you're dealing with. Um, so for, for example, look at that. You got the F5, or 5F8 Tweed. It tells you how to get those tones. It goes through every single one. If you want one, it's on here. You want to go, oh, look, look at that, Euro Uber, Bogner. Let's see, where is that one? 
Euro Uber. This is a Bogner amp, so if you ever want to tinker around with an amp that's uh, extremely expensive, that's this one. Let's drop it down, it's a little bit cleaner. It's um, good stuff. I mean, you can you could literally dive into this stuff and go for days. But I'll let you do the rest of the tinkering. I just wanted to give you an idea of what these things do, what to expect when you dive into each of these pages. And that's about it. Until next time, I'll, uh, next time I'll go a little bit into the cab, which won't be too much, and then I'll go into both and how to like kind of synchronize the sounds that you might want to get from either of these, depending on the size of your cab, how many cabs you want, maybe the location, and then so on and so forth. So I hope you uh, enjoyed. If, if you did, uh, give it a like. If not, give me a thumbs down and let me know what you didn't like in the comments. I really appreciate the feedback. Um, I didn't actually end up getting into any module notes. I guess I'll try to do that next time. So is what it is. Take care, fellas.